Yeah, I bet you see these things everywhere, but this fourth generation Toyota Highlander receives some updates. So strap on your dad hat, sit back and chill because I'm about to drop off a really relaxed review of the new Toyota Highlander. Oh, and it's not a mid-cycle refresh, so relax on the graphic editor. For those who have growing families and are looking to avoid that minivan life, the Highlander is a viable option. With bold, muscular styling, seating for up to eight passengers, and a hybrid option, you can haul the crew in style. There's no huge changes to the exterior for this model year, but, but, Toyota's added a brand new color, Cypress Green. That's this, and to be honest, I kinda dig it. And if you don't, relax. Just let us know what you think down in the comments section. Opening the large doors of the Highlander reveals its modest but functional interior. Ingress and egress are simple, and soft materials line the cabin with plenty of spots to store small items. Comfortable and supportive front seats make it easy to find a relaxed position, and the second row provides good legroom and headroom, even for a tall guy like me, with standard USB ports. You'll notice our tester has the bench seating arrangement, but captain's chairs are available on higher trims. Yeah, captain's chairs would probably be my pick because it'll be easier to access the third row, especially if you have two child seats in place. And speaking of getting in the third row, it's not a relaxing experience to say, especially for kids because the handle's way up here and it's kind of hard to grab. And you also have some control handles right here that scoot the seat forward and back. But let's get in the back seat so I can show you that it's not really meant for adults. I should say, oh, oh yeah, all right, all right, so, you know, back here, my knees are against the second row, and my head is against the headliner, so, yeah, this is definitely for kids, and back of kids, but, yeah, how am I going to get out of here? Yeah. Uh, is this what babies feel like when they're being birthed? Where's the doctor? Slap these cheeks. I want to point out that the third row doesn't have any USB ports on any trim of the Highlander, so plan accordingly. Behind the third row, there's 16 cubic feet of cargo room, which is a little smaller than the Honda Pilot and a lot smaller than the Chevy Traverse. But if no one is riding way out back, fold the third row for 48.4 cubic feet and the second and third row folded yields 84.3 cubic feet. One thing that may ruin your relaxed day is folding the third row. Some companies have you pull the strap, but you gotta go with this hard latch right here. And if the second row is in a semi-comfortable position, don't fold the seats fast because you'll get stuck like that. It has to be at a certain angle or something and then the headrest goes in maybe or maybe not see i'm not relaxed where's my coffee to get my mind off the rear let's go to the front where toyota finally brings their new multimedia system to the highlander with an available 12.3 inch screen a 12 inch digital gauge cluster is also available and wireless charging has been moved from the center console box to under the center dashboard for easier access. The new multimedia system works great. The screen is nice and big and clear. And the rear view camera gives you this top down view that's really helpful when you're parking in tight spaces. My only thing is, why is the volume knob all the way over there? I don't want my passengers changing my volume. But I do have to add the HVAC controls aren't integrated into the screen and you have tangible buttons for rotating and poking, which is great for me. Poke, poke, stop. Poke, poke. While trying to realign my chakras thanks to that volume knob, I'll continue to focus on the new. Like this new 2.4 liter turbo four cylinder linked to an eight speed automatic transmission that now replaces the outgoing V6. Horsepower takes a ding, but relax, torque gets a big bump, which allows this four banger to tow up to 5,000 pounds. 
and this new powertrain is more environmentally conscious with an improvement on CO2 emissions. This turbo four-cylinder engine does a great job at replacing the V6. Off the line, power delivery is prompt, there's no real big turbo lag, and the shifts are nice and smooth, and that added torque makes this heavy SUV feel like it's moving with some gusto. I think the only thing that you will miss with the V6 is that more robust V6 engine noise because this four-cylinder turbo, when you floor it, it could sound a little bit whiny. Along with added torque, this new powertrain improves fuel economy. Yeah, not by much, but adding all-wheel drive only penalizes efficiency by one MPG, so let's count the small wins. These numbers are on par with the segment, but if you're looking for more efficiency, the Highlander Hybrid will put out a combined 36 miles per gallon, with the same 1 MPG ding if you opt for all-wheel drive. For a day-to-day -day driver, this does just fine. The brakes work nicely, it's a nice tight turning circle, the seats are comfortable, and overall, it doesn't feel like you're throwing this around. It doesn't feel like a big, huge SUV. It drives like a really big sedan, which is nice. My only thing is there is a little bit of wind noise coming in from over my left shoulder. And also the steering can be a bit light, which isn't a bad thing, especially on long road trips, but you can firm up the steering with sport mode, which not only does that, but it also holds your gears longer at higher revs or you can throw it in the eco mode, just cruise and relax. All Highlanders come with Toyota Safety Sense 2.5 Plus, which includes pre-collision with pedestrian detection, dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert with steering assist, and lane tracing assist. Blind spot warning is also available on all but the lowest base trim. The safety systems work great. Blind spot monitoring comes in clutch. When I'm looking over my right shoulder, it lets me know if a small car is there and I can't really see too much because of that thick seat pillar and the baby seat. Also, the lane keep assist works fine and it's not too grabby and it directs me right back into my lane if I'm drifting off, which is pretty good. But I gotta warn you, it can be a bit sensitive at times and it will give you the beeps and that's not really relaxing. So just make sure you're paying attention and you won't really get the beeps, right? Yeah, right. Pricing for a base Highlander starts at $36,420 plus destination. And that includes 18 inch wheels, LED headlights, smart key access with push button start, cloth seating for eight passengers and power adjustable driver's seat, eight inch touchscreen with wireless phone connectivity, tri-zone climate control, and five USB ports. Move up the trim ladder for features like LED fog lights, 20 inch wheels, roof rails, hands-free lift gate, leather upholstery, heated and ventilated front seats, heated second row seats, heated steering wheel, 12 inch touchscreen and digital gauge cluster, wireless charging, a sunroof, 11 speaker JBL audio system, and surround view camera. For a sportier look, consider the XSC trim starting at just over $43,000, which has unique styling, sport tuned suspension, and dual exhaust tips. And if efficiency is your goal, the Highlander Hybrid starts at just over $40,000. If you think that you missed the boat on a V6 Highlander, or you just really dig the four cylinder turbo model, well, go on kbb.com and get a fair purchase price on a new or used Highlander or even one of its competitors. Click on the link above for more details. Competitors in the mid-sized three-row SUV segment are vast and include the aforementioned Honda Pilot, Chevy Traverse, the new Mazda CX-90, Ford Explorer, Dodge Durango, Kia Telluride, Hyundai Palisade, Nissan Pathfinder, Subaru Ascent, and if you're in need of more third-row space, the Toyota Grand Highlander will be available soon. So, so many mid-sized three-row SUVs, but Toyota gives the Highlander a way to stand out with practicality, different powertrains, and that Toyota resale value and reliability that may make ownership a relaxing experience. I'm out of coffee.